You have nothing to contribute to this, so stay the fuck out! This is the very first mask I ever wore. Wow. This is actually this mask right here. I'll show you. This mask here. Uh -huh. This mask on the cover of the CD. Because shortly after, um, shortly after Ozfest, this thing started to do what it just continues right. to do. It was starting to gag me out, like it was melting to my face. So I had to wrap it in duct tape. And you can actually see, <laughs> actually see the duct nice. tape back here in the back. So all inside my mask was basically duct tape. And then afterwards, it was just done. I was just like, oh man, that sucks. Since their debut at OzFest 99, the faces behind the masks of Slipknot have been a well-kept secret. Sure, some hardcore maggots knew their identities from persistent autograph seeking or from seeing a handful of grainy photos on the internet, but for the most part, their mug shots were strictly confidential. As soon as this mask comes off, it, it's not Slipknot anymore. Though Slipknot say they will never perform together without the masks, the knot is currently on temporary hiatus. And with the first such break in the band's history, two side projects are emerging. Stone Sour is a group that lead singer Corey Taylor belonged to before he joined Slipknot, and a group that now also includes guitarist Jim Root. The second band is the Murder Dolls, a project that includes drummer Joey Jordanson and Static X member Trip Eisen. So, three members of Slipknot are now ready to reveal their faces to the world. Death metal drum roll, please. Meet lead singer Corey Taylor, drummer Joey Jordanson, guitarist Jim Root. Seed, gotta let it grow. Why you gotta watch when I let it feed? Better look into the mirror, but the face you hide away every day. Slipknot is not breaking up. This is just a momentary hiatus. This is so me and Joey and Jim can express ourselves in different ways. You know, I've, I've gotten a lot of questions from kids it's like, are you gonna wear the mask? I'm like, no, what are you talking about? It's like, why would I do that and make Slipknot Jr.? <laughs>
Don't film that. 
I'm not. I would never film. Fuck you, you are too hard, you fuck. Give me a cell phone and we're gonna come up. Where's he? I don't have one, you gotta find. Who's got a cell phone? Drink some fucking water with it. Drink some fucking water with it. You got a phone? No. Oh god. Drink some fucking water with it. We're gonna make it off? Oh yeah! This is so bad, dude. What's the number? Uh, it's not five. Six five one. Not this one. This is Two six zero. Hold on. Good day. Good day. Have all the shit that's happening. All of those now is smashed. Watch him go. Watch him go. Watch him go. Watch him go. Three, two, one.
fucking body in red with my mask on and I'll wear a dress and wear no fucking underwear I'm gonna write I'm gonna take the dress off and have some weird ass thing covering my coxton I'm gonna write unpunk on my fucking chest and write 666 on my fucking stomach
Yes. I might have them insured. Let me do one thing. I might pay more than a bank. Like buddy Burrow. Hey, buddy Burrow. Actually, hey, can you do it right there? <laughs> Phrase. Um, I want to. I want to do. You know where you're like screaming. Yeah. Like, why don't you um instead of going yeah yeah like yeah. go leave leave one of them out <clears throat> so this can like carry it a little longer. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. So so just that part. Yeah, we could go through the whole thing, but when we get there, just be conscious of yeah. I'll, I'll do this so you can note it like. Like, not do it every time. You know what I mean? Okay. Just do what you do, and, and then when I go like that, that means, like, just do, yeah, and let this hang out and do its thing. Because okay. we're going to have the, the molten mic fucking hitting everything. You yeah, know? absolutely. Let this be more, like, open. Okay. Let's get it on. Let's start from the beginning. lobby call to go sound check. So we're back to the hotel at 5.30 and then we have an 8 o'clock lobby call to check out and go do the show. Get on a bus, drive to Brussels. Get annoying. Boy, this is 
very boring. This is terrible. Well, if you're going to make it up, I guess I'll go over there. I'll go over there. Can you bring the level, your output level down on the sampler? At least 15 decibels. I got it. I got it. I got it. Steve, autograph. You see no fucking oh, step boy. Perfect, perfect. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. They're all around here. I don't know what any of them look like. They all have split on that. Perfect. Look, behind bars. of LSD, did something inside of me, fucked up my philosophy, everyone else is spitting all hypocrisy, truth lies inside of OZ, smoking trees with no seeds, got me crazy, hazy, deranged, oh wait, already stolen by Jay-Z, is it really so hard for all the G's to find originality, sick of this shit, pulling your card, run for your card, don't come back or you'll be verbally scarred, for sure I'll be an enemy, shut down like John F. Kennedy, telling the truth has got to be the hardest shit in his history, the industry is killing me, I make that shit industry, swinging an MC from a tree is nasty, please to branch thee, attack thee, smack thee, pull out your cat and bust a few cats. Absent me.
back to the drugs. Get back to the drugs. Took some drugs and a hit a crack whore. Paul took some drugs and hit a crack whore. They threw me in the jail and then they slammed that fucking door. And then they let me out and I went to court. Yeah. Manchester, someone threw some pig ears up on stage, so I figured the least I could do, since I don't know who the fuck they were, is at least put them on my head. I don't want to slow my personnel, dude. Stage, I don't slow my personnel, dude. We're going to the stage at this time. We're going to grab a mic, sing it out, and play that triangle part that we've been needing to do live for so long. I don't know what it is. Did you the triangle back out here? On a cold and gray Chicago morning, another little baby child is born in the ghetto. In the ghetto! And this fog cries. If there's one thing that she don't need, it's another little baby child to be in the ghetto. Take a look at you and me. We do proud I don't know what the fuck you mean. No. Fuck it, let's go. There's a sound check right there. Done. We're out. Take a look at you and me. We do proud of you. Bars are gone, still to come. Drive a rope, but I don't get it. That's right. Hey, I had to dedicate the long grass. So we're on that journey. What do I mean? Fuck it. Part of my new set. Nice. Looks nice. Pretty cool. What is that shit? Oh, slip not first. Now please report to the stage. Oh, slip not first. Now please report to the stage. Is that me? That ain't me, is it? What? Ooh, 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 ooh. That was me. How you doing? I might have changed a little bit. It's still me, goddammit. It's all good. Oh, shit. I'm like, this is the one. Check my passes and shit. Dude, the guy with the ass, you? That man is me, dude. San Francisco, man.
with the straight kick. With the straight kick. Yeah, yeah, with the straight so, kick. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. All right, cheers. Cheers. That's going to be badass. My only consolation is a lie. The apex of my consequence is dying here tonight. Winter hasn't ended and it always looks like rain. I can't remember anything. Inside the absolution we succumb. And appetites a bit of sweet, I think I'm going numb. A chance to give up avarice has marked my one regret. The child of burning time is gone, he hasn't come back yet. Before I tell my story, please consider who I am. I missed my window years ago, I'm doing all I can. A tragedy is commonplace, but in the end they go away. My skin is still the only stain I'm left to wear in shame. I cut my name. Into my heart, I'll tear it all apart. I beg you, burn me away. I won't become your hero just to fight the life I save. Burn me away. I won't give up tomorrow just to lose it all.
all your secrets in my skin. Come away with the innocence and leave me with my sins. The air around me still feels like a cage. Love is just a camouflage for what resembles rage. So if you love me, let me go And run away before I know My heart is just too dark to care I can't destroy what isn't there Deliver me into my fate If I'm alone, I cannot hate I don't deserve to have you My smile was taken long ago If I can change, I hope I never know
was trying to get the intro on. Play that one? The intro? Yeah, just play it from the intro. Chopper at the beginning? Yeah, maybe wah or something or just else. Yeah. Start right with that. With People be yeah, they be tripping. Yeah, what? you weren't in here. We we're talking about opening with the um, what's the song? Slip not song called? Not uh, opening. Buster exists. Play that thing. How's it? Uh, Playing a whole Slipknot song, just going to do it, you know. Just yeah. Intro. 
and then yeah, just the intro there. It's actually the middle section that caves. We have marching, we have like marching snares, and it's all like a big like drum corps. Yeah, you know better. But they, yeah, that's cool. It's just that part. Yeah, it's totally different. <laughs>
just to lose it all today. Fuck. Ha! Just thought I'd do some improv there. I don't know if you. Yeah, you fuck. You dig it, right? Fuck. You dig it the most. I totally. It's like because I I rewrote that line. So I'm fighting hearing the demo line in my head. I'm like, I don't fucking. Yeah, exactly. <sighs>
At the end of recording the album, there was like, I was gonna fly to England because my grandpa was sick. I mean, I had to fly in there anyways, but he, uh, we had like two or three days left, you know, and uh, he ended up passing away. So I went in the studio. I'm just like, turn it on, you know, turn the mic on. And just let it go. Like, <sighs> that's the, uh, that's the shit that was, uh, the screaming in the, in the beginning of the album, you know. I guess that kind of set the pace for that one. <laughs> so everything, everything after that, yeah, just got crazy. I think to understand the Iowa record and the Iowa cycle, you need to know what happened on the first record and the first record cycle, just to have a, a reference point on what we went through. Um, the record, cycle f for the first record was horrifying um, new band trying to make it um, just imagine yourself and eight other people being shoved into one tour bus taken all over the world literally drug all over the world with no money no cell phone no computers fighting just to stay alive um, hiding whatever alcohol you could find in your bunk to make sure that you got some you know when when the whole band on the rider gets one 12 pack of beer for nine guys it was war it was war with food it was war with everything and the shows were war especially you couldn't s sit sit around um you couldn't you didn't want to be that guy you had to go as hard as you could all the time and the music made it a lot easier to do that obviously there were certain times though when when we were sick hungry tired didn't want to play but we always did and we always did it absolutely as hard as possible and then you get start getting noticed 
And then the let record label starts coming around, seeing the shows. And at this point, at least for myself, I didn't, I didn't know if we were a big band, if we were, you know, just a flash in the pan. And all of a sudden, some more attention and more little cool things started to happen in our lives and getting to go to places that we never would be able to get to go before. Um, meeting certain people, you're like, whoa, that person wants to see our band. That's, you know, that's pretty crazy. And um, there was this, and this builds up to this record label kid in Europe. I guarantee he's not working for the industry anymore. Um, he came up to me and he was like, man, if all we got to do for this next record is write three weight and bleeds, and you know everything's going to be great, you know. And I was just like, what? Like this is what. This is what's coming at us the whole time too. Now the money and everything's starting to come in, and people are like, "Wow, this this band is really going to do it." So we better hurry up and get get the cash out of them before it ends. Because who would think a nine-person band's ever going to stick together? And um, so I think that's where the Iowa hate and the Iowa angst comes from. Is is from everybody wanting us to do exactly what we didn't want to do. So therefore, we just threw up the big middle finger in the air and, and made Iowa. Iowa, to me, what I represent in vision is that it was going to be the darkest I could become without being arrested, locked up, divorced, uh, have my kids taken away from me, abandoned, any of those sort of philosophies that will go with making real art. Iowa is an example of how we succeeded and failed on so many fucking levels. It's the darkest fucking album I've ever heard. It's gross. It's thick. It's brutal. It's heavy as shit. It's the fucking, like, it, it's the only album I've ever heard where you can wear it like a skin. You can wear it like fucking clothes. You put them on like fucking hunting boots. It's disgusting disgustingly fucking heavy and dark and everything that we were feeling and everything that we were doing went into that album I mean every chemical every fucking drop of every insane thing that we were feeling and hurting about went into that album it, it's it's to this day the darkest period of my fucking life and if I hadn't been able to go there it would not sound nearly as real or as visceral as it was supposed to. Polly was just unassuming. He was so fucking gifted musically that I mean even the subtle stuff like I remember it was on Metabolic I, I remember we were working on it and something just wasn't sounding right to Polly and uh he, he suggested maybe just moving it a half a step, just this one little piece in the music, moving it half a step down. And it gave it such a different balance, a different vibe. And it was genius. I mean, it was the first time that I'd ever, like he just, he had such a great overview for music and yet such a, a, a great ear for just subtle nuances, man. Just little things, moving it around try in different positions you know I mean just I mean just that little slide and the song made so much more sense I, I just I'd never I, I mean everything like all the exposure that I'd had to people writing, writing music and whatnot was so basic until then man you come up with a riff you, you, you know two and two equals four and you got a song and yet he heard so much different shit. He taught me a lot about writing music. He taught me a lot about what to listen for. He taught me about, you know, it's like you can't just look at it, the overview. You gotta listen for the details. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fucking get into it. And he just had a, he just had such a gift for that. And um, the great thing was, is like when it came to, when it came to, when he was playing, had no ego, man. He would, he could lock in with the riff, and then he could lay back. You know, he could lay, he could lock in, and bounce back and forth between the riff and the drums. You know, and 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 supply that backbeat, supply that that natural bass that uh, you know a lot of technical players are very reluctant to do. I don't really remember a whole lot 
from the recording of the Iowa record. It was kind of a dark time for me anyways, and it, it was the first full record that I worked, you know, with the band on. Uh, basically, when we got done touring on the first, the first album cycle, we finished Tattoo the Earth, and like, you know, less than, le you know, less than three or four days of being home, Paul was already calling me up to, uh, you know, f to go over to uh, his brother Tony's basement, where him and Joey were working on, uh, you know, we're already working on some of the demo stuff for the, for the Iowa record, so, essentially, you know, not even having a break from the first album cycle, I was already over with Paul and Joey working in Tony's basement on, you know, on the Iowa record, and, you know, we did that for a few weeks, like every night we'd get together, you know, and play for a few hours through all the tunes that we had at, the, at that point and uh, you know we knew we were going to do it with Ross and uh, we found out we were going to do it at Sound City which was um, you know pretty epic studio in, in the valley in LA um, you know some great records have been done there uh, I was shacked up with Chris we were split in a place and uh, you know it, it was fun I you know I had my Xbox set up and when I wasn't playing guitar or doing any of that shit I was uh, you know partying because <laughs> that's uh, what we were doing at the time to me like the biggest thing uh, during that time that was the most influential on all of us was the business stuff it was people who were meddling people who were fractioning our band off into separate little groups people who were creating conflicts where there didn't need to be any uh, you know, and I was, that was dark. That was, it was a fucking terrible time, you know? Once, once you have a band and, and you start having some success, the people who are, you know, were the people that they were are no longer, you know? And uh, that's usually for the worst, you know? I mean, it's, it's easy to inflate people's egos. All of a sudden you got people around you telling you the best whatever, you're the great, you know? It's how much do you listen to that? How much do you pay attention to it? You know, and what does it do to you? You know, it's all very poisoning. The entire industry is very poisoning. It takes, like, you know, what was once fairly innocent, decent people and can turn them into absolute monsters, you know? So, I mean, that's something that uh, was taking place at that point. Not that anybody turned into a monster, but people being affected, being affected by all of the shit that's outside, you know, coming in on them. And uh, all of a sudden, you've got more friends than you've ever had. You know, everybody wants to be your buddy. Girls who wouldn't fucking spit on you if your hair was on fire, or, you know, asking for phone number, things like that. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty disgusting, really. You know, in, in terms of getting to see a darker side of humanity that you never got to see as just being a civilian that went to work every day, you know? I don't even know really where to start with how to describe this record. Being is probably the darkest place that this band's ever experienced, ever. And that's what made such, that's what made the record. If we weren't in the place that we were at that time, this record wouldn't exist. And the first record was fun. This one was com complete hate. And I listen to it now, and it actually scares me. But I love it. I love it more than anything. At this point, I'll, I'll sum it up like this. Just with, with what I have to say. As I love my eight brothers. There's no one like them. There's no one that can replace them. There's, there's no prosthetic for that. Not to, not, not to heal, heal a, a hurt heart. But Paul's still here. Iowa's still here. It's all here. And we're forging ahead. We're going on tour. And like, Iowa will live on forever. It's one of the, actually, I will say it, it's the heaviest and best metal record of all time. Done.
Fuck! Fuck! Fuck you! Fuck. Take that, motherfucker!